On a stormy night in January 1996 in Virginia, Brazil, a strange incident allegedly took place which was to thrust this part of South America into the international spotlight. Incredibly, over a dozen witnesses claim to have seen strange lights in the sky and alien creatures running loose in the area. Was this man's first significant contact with an alien race? Or was it a case of people misidentifying more terrestrial events? I travelled to Brazil to see for myself. This is the story I was told. On the 20th of January 1996, an unidentified object crashed into the area behind me. Over the next two days, two alien creatures were captured alive by the Brazilian authorities. Within hours of the first capture, a total media blackout was imposed. And despite scores of military and emergency personnel and over a dozen witnesses seeing both the craft and the bodies, the Brazilian government refused to admit that anything of an extraterrestrial nature took place here. As incredible as it sounds, that's the story many people here believe. Could the Virginia incident be the most significant close encounter ever? Or was it a hoax, mass hysteria, or even pure fantasy? I've received reports from military witnesses who say that they were part of a military unit sent to capture an alien creature. People who claim to be witnesses give accounts of creatures being taken to the local hospital and details of the autopsy performed. And I talked to the frightened locals who say they saw a craft crashing into their town. It's just unbelievably undeniable. Undeniable. No? Doesn't matter what the military say, they are hiding. They are hiding. They, they do have captured aliens in Brazil alive. The creature was uh, about 160 centimeters long, with big V-shaped feet. It had dark brown skin, which looked oily, a big head, bigger than ours, with some kind of protuberances on the top of it. Three of them. These creatures from another planet were captured, taken in by the army, and then examined biologically. A method I use when investigating UFO cases that, after assessing all the evidence and deliberating the pros and cons, I give it marks out of ten. The case of Virginia gets a seven. I don't think that people are making this up. What I do think we have to check out very carefully is the possibility that we are dealing with a, a series of events um, uh, which, which have been, as it were, linked together, perhaps by people who are very keen to come to particular conclusions, and that we're dealing perhaps with nothing more exciting than a series of misidentifications um, and, and people putting perhaps quite extraordinary explanations on events which may be rather mundane. I think this is going to be uh, a very important situation where we can prove that alien beings had really visited our planet. It's hard to imagine a more unlikely setting for what would be mankind's greatest contact with an alien race. Virginia is a small industrial city of 120,000 people in south-central Brazil. Since the news broke of the alleged sighting and capture of alien creatures, an army of UFO researchers, international TV crews and press descended on the area to cover, if it's true, the most astonishing close encounter that the world has ever heard about. By the time we arrived in Virginia to meet the researchers and the witnesses, the mystery and intrigue were at an all-time high. Well, the town was just going insane because everybody 
was on the streets because many UFOs were sighted at that time. So people was just connecting one thing to another. The city was in a panic. Someone said that a military policeman had died under strange circumstances after allegedly handling one of the aliens. Some people even said that healthy animals in the local zoo had mysteriously died overnight and dozens of people had reported UFO sightings. Virginia was in the grip of an alien frenzy. Fantástico teve acesso às declarações secretas desse militar. Segundo os pesquisadores que acompanham o caso Varginha, ele sabe. Aí daqui a gente já correu para lá e desceu. E quando a gente estava descendo, o que nós podemos dizer sobre os eventos? What we can say from the evidence, the maximum we can say is that there is not the slightest bit of doubt that everything did happen. We say this not only because we have heard from people from the town who were indirectly involved but with people who participated in the principal events. Some of the UFO believers claim that on the night of Friday the 19th of January, a US spy satellite detected an unidentified object entering the Earth's atmosphere. The North American radar defense system at Cheyenne Mountain or NORAD alerted the Brazilian government that the object was heading towards Virginia. Immediately, the military authorities at the base at Tres Corações went on full alert. It was a night of frenzied military activity behind the scenes. that the Americans uh, not only alerted but they are very interested in being part of this because we know if they can put their hands in a, in a wreckage or even in one of these creatures many things can be developed so yes we, we understand that they're involved up to their necks awful lot of sophisticated equipment up there looking for re-entry of an American satellite, of a Russian satellite, or a flying saucer. So did we know it was coming down? Was word sent to the Brazilian Air Force? What's the involvement of the American government? Brazilians don't have a lot of spy satellites up there, but the American and Russian governments do. So there's a larger picture here. While this object was falling down, it was observed by a few witnesses. It was very strange because some of them could describe an object like a cigar shaped with a cigar shaped format like in flame with some uh, sparkles things like that several witnesses said they did see a strange craft in the sky that night Eureka and Aurelina de Freitas saw what they thought was a UFO glide past their farmhouse a mere five feet off the ground in the early hours of January the 20th it appeared to be in some sort of trouble. We were sleeping, but my wife could not sleep, so she got up. We heard the noise of the cows becoming startled. That's what got our attention. My wife went to the window and called me over. It was around one o'clock in the morning, and we saw an object flying over with a lot of smoke coming from it. So I called my husband over, and we both looked at it. I started to ask, what was this? It was some kind of submarine flying over. It was long and on its rear, it seemed like there were bits flying behind it, like when you tie ribbons to a fan. It was the size of a minibus with lots of smoke, a light color, almost transparent. I have never seen anything like it in my life. The most astonishing part of the story was about to unfold. The 
the sensational story of an alleged close encounter in Brazil got even stranger. One of the anonymous sources I spoke to claimed that at approximately 7 a.m. on Saturday the 20th, the local fire brigade here received an anonymous phone call, which reported that a strange creature was seen running loose on the outskirts of Virginia. He further claimed that the fireman drove the short distance to where the creature was reported, about five minutes away. But curiously, when they arrived at the location in Jardim Andery to capture the creature, a contingent from the nearby military base, Essa, was already there. They both have a surprise to see each other the team from the fire department and the team from the, the army but they agreed to go into cooperation and capture the creature at about 10 30 in the morning according to my source the firemen located the creature cowering in the tall grass they were expecting to find a wild cat or dog. What they say they found would change life in Virginia forever. Pretty soon, everyone had heard the stories about crashed spacecraft and alien creatures. The town was abuzz with rumors. The creature offered no resistance at all to its capture. It almost couldn't move. It was so fragile, it was so suffering. The fire brigade people told me, one of them, that the creature didn't show any reaction. It was quite easy to capture. He thought that it was ill somehow. It was, it was feeling bad somehow because he didn't move. Did this incident actually happen? was an alien creature netted alive by the authorities and driven off. Over 11 people who claimed to be eyewitnesses told me it did. One, a local lawyer, witnessed the military activity from his house nearby. He agreed to make a statement, providing his identity wasn't disclosed. After the soldiers had entered the woods, I heard three gunshots. And then I thought to myself, they killed someone down there. Some few minutes later, they came out from the woods. One of the soldiers was carrying a sack where, as far as I could make out, something was moving inside. At the time, I thought it was an animal or something like that because something was definitely moving inside that sack. People make mistakes. People misidentify things, particularly if they see them under unusual conditions. So always, I would say to people, look for the prosaic explanations first look for the misidentification of uh, some sort of military exercise going on. By early afternoon, according to reports from witnesses, the live, allegedly alien creature had been brought to the military academy known as ESSA, here in Tres Codasois, a high security training base. É o seguinte, o pessoal não pode estar fazendo essas tomadas. Certo. Yeah. Ah, fala com eles. É, é. We have, we have to cut them. I asked to interview the senior officer. After waiting for several hours, a major at the base agreed to give me this exclusive interview to set the record straight once and for all on the incident. If some of the descriptions by the witnesses seem a little outlandish, the official military version is bizarre in the extreme. The uh, appearance of an extraterrestrial did not take place because it has never been officially proven. What happened was that on the 20th January 1996, there were violent storms in Virginia. 
here in French Corsos. We were having a ceremony. We also had to send some truck for maintenance while they were still under guarantee. So we sent two trucks into Virginia for this to happen. To further complicate the story, there were more coincidences relating to the events. At the hospital in Virginia, there was an expectant dwarf couple. Which coincided with Eza taking the creature in a truck to the hospital in Virginia. There must be a confusion between this and the dwarf couple who were expecting a baby. Pregnant dwarfs, violent storms and broken down trucks. Surprised by the official military version of events, I returned to the fire brigade in Virginia and asked to speak to the men who allegedly captured the creature on the morning of January the 20th. Why do people say that the fire brigade captured an alien on that day? I think that the public should ask how it was possible beings from another planet were expected to be captured by six to ten firemen. Everyone here, including the commander, doesn't believe it because we never saw it. The fire brigade here in Virginia deny that they captured any aliens on January the 20th. To them, they say it was just another routine day. But when I asked them to tell us what they did on this routine day, they told me it was classified. Hardly surprising, since most military activity is indeed classified. By early afternoon, in the intense heat of the day, the streets were once again deserted. And there this incredible story might well have ended, were it not for three local girls. At around 4 p.m. that afternoon, Katia, Lilian and Valkyra took a shortcut home from work and say they spotted a creature identical to the one allegedly captured by the military that morning. It was cowering by a wall. It was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon and we were coming home from work. We took a shortcut through Jardine Andere on our way to Santana where we live. We saw this very strange creature, but it didn't notice us at all at first. Then Katya screamed, and then it saw us. I asked the girls to describe what this creature looked like. With the help of an artist, we built up a detailed sketch. It was brown, and its skin looked very soft. The sun was shining on it, and it looked like the outside of a heart. The eyes were big, round and red, and there were three horns on its head, and visible veins on its arms. When it looked at us, it seemed as though it was suffering, anxious, as if it was in some kind of pain. It was more when my eyes made direct contact with its eyes, and I could just sense that it was suffering. There was just something about it. Katya and Liliane ran off, but I froze. But they came back and grabbed me, and we all ran away. So they arrived home, and they told their mother, Mommy, we just saw the devil. And the mother said, the mother is a very brave woman, she said, no devil is going to play with my kids. And she managed to get to the location just to smell its train, smell uh, odor in air. And, but n no, nothing else was seen, the creature wasn't there anymore. And what happened is that the, the rumors was spread that a few kids saw the devil. <laughs> Clearly there was something strange there, um, but there are a large number of strange wild animals uh, in Brazil, and some of them uh, are certainly not creatures with which uh, Western researchers are familiar. It's a large country, and there are all sorts of um, unusual uh, animals there that uh, may indeed cause someone to uh, say, my goodness, what's that? There's no animal you could be 
confusing with what the girls just saw. It's just impossible. Not inside Virginia. Virginia is a, it's a place where you have many industries. It's a very civilized place. You won't find wild animals just walking around the streets. It's just impossible. I do not think that any of our principal witnesses are lying. None of them. Not the civilians or the military. The statements are concrete, and I believe in the sincerity of all of them. As I mentioned, we had violent storms that day. In Virginia, there's a mentally handicapped man, a dwarf, who has a strange disfigured appearance. As a consequence of these storms that we'd had, he had hurt himself whilst trying to take cover or get home. When this happened, he was near the area where these girls said they saw this strange creature. But if we were to look at what they saw again, they could have confused this dwarf man with something else due to his disfigured physical appearance and dark skin. By nighttime, Virginia and the surrounding areas were alight with talk of aliens, UFOs and military cover-ups. But even so, no one could have predicted what some people say happened next. TLC doesn't really think that aliens are going to invade us, okay? Do you feel better now, you big babies? TLC's Alien Invasion Week. The story of a supposed alien capture in Brazil gets even stranger. I was told by an anonymous military witness it was on this road at around 10 p.m. on Saturday that a military patrol saw another creature lying injured on the roadside. And like the one earlier on, they decided to capture it with little resistance. They put it in a net and then drove it a few miles back into Virginia and took it to the local hospital. Researcher Vittorio Pacchini secured an interview with a military witness who claimed to have been involved in the capture of this live alien. This is what he told us. On January 22nd, 1996, Monday, a military convoy with three trucks left Eza and headed towards Virginia. In charge of the operations were two S2 Brazilian Army intelligence lieutenants. They are secret officers. Most of the army people don't even know who they are. On the road outside Virginia, we saw a strange creature crouched by the side of the road, so we stopped. When we realized what it was, everybody was shocked, but we were ordered to put it in the back of the truck and drive to the hospital. I remember everyone being terrified. They just got so surprised because they never thought all they knew about alien beings was from TV. And TV, you can see many different shapes, many different kinds. They never thought an alien being could be like that. They were really astonished and uh, they were afraid of getting some disease from it. According to the anonymous officer, the creature was driven off in an ambulance to the local hospital. But it was dead on arrival. There were a, a lot of doctors, over 15 of them, all wearing surgical masks. Some had stethoscopes around their necks. There were military policemen, firemen. One of the S2 lieutenants was filming everything with the portable camera while the other one was taking notes. One of the doctors came over and opened that little slit of a mouth, grabbed its tongue and rolled it out using forceps. It was a long, flat, black tongue, about 12 centimeters long. 
When the doctor released it, it went straight back into that little slit. There was a, an unbearable smell of ammonia. The creature was a, about 160 centimeters long, with big V-shaped feet. It had dark brown skin, which looked oily. A big head, bigger than ours, with some kind of protuberances on the top of it. Three of them. It didn't have a nose, just two holes. And it just had a slit of a mouth and big round eyes with no pupils at all. Its legs were short and skinny, it had long, thin arms. After hours of examination at the hospital, the anonymous military witness said that the creature was then taken by road under tight security to the ESSA base at Tres Corazones. The dead creature remained under guard at the army facility until very early the following morning, Tuesday the 23rd of January. Under the watchful eye of Lieutenant Colonel Olympio Wanderley, our source says that the alleged alien was then transported to its final destination. The next morning, at 0300 hours, the same well-armed convoy under the command of Sergeant Pedrosa, an intelligence officer, took this creature to a military facility in Campinas, where they delivered it to Captain Ramirez, an officer from EZA, who was already waiting for the convoy. From the military facility, they then transferred the creature to the Unicamp University in the same town. Behind the unassuming exterior, there are in fact two restricted access laboratories in the basement of the university. And why the creatures were taken there? Because in the University of Sao Paulo, there is a big team of forensic doctors, one of the finest in the country. And they are headed by Dr. Badam Palhares, who is regarded one of the top, the top forensic doctor, pathologists in the country. I contacted Dr. Palhares at the medical facility. He declined to go on camera and give us an interview, but he did telephone us later to give us this statement. I am not and have not actively and personally participated officially in the Virginia incident. I have never been involved with any member of the National Security Service or the Army in dealing with the issues relating to the ETs of the Virginia case. According to the editor of a UFO magazine, several months after the incident, a student asked him whether he had been involved. You know what the answer was? <laughs> he said, well, my young man, I really would love to give you an answer, but please, Ask this question again in 10 or 15 years from now. Unconfirmed reports say that after several weeks of testing at the high security laboratories, the creatures were flown to the United States in an unmarked transport plane. the town of Virginia buzzing with rumors of flying saucers and alien creatures, this bizarre story took a tragic turn. Shortly after the alleged incident, one of the soldiers who allegedly came into contact with the creature died. He was Marco Eli Sherezi, a 23-year-old plainclothes military police agent at the army base. His sister Marta is convinced that he was contaminated by the creature as he died only weeks after the alleged incident. He was involved completely with the police operation from start to finish and accompanied the creature from where it was captured to the Humanitas Hospital. He didn't get home till very late that night. 
When he actually captured the creature, he could have directly touched it, and this links with some reports I had that he could have been contaminated through the skin, not necessarily through a cut or infection. So because of this, there was a capture, and my brother did capture the creature, because there was originally nothing wrong with him. The doctor said no autopsy was necessary. Blood test results were available, however, and indicated that Marco's blood contained 8% of unknown toxic substances. The doctors told the family to bury the body immediately, no funeral. The family didn't understand why, but followed the doctor's orders. Now they're suing Minas Gerais state because they want to exhume Marco Elixarez's body. But I understand that this won't ever happen because militaries are involved. This is national security subject and the judge won't let the family do it. In the media spotlight and under intense public pressure to make a statement about the incidents, the military held their own press conference at which General Lima, commander of ESSA, publicly denied the army's involvement. I think it's a huge scandal. We have captured aliens and the population won't have the right to know about it. The military, if they were conducting some sort of uh, uh, night maneuvers, uh, are not necessarily going to suddenly start telling people what they were doing and they are not suddenly going to um, explain themselves to UFO researchers who turn up and ask questions. That's simply not the way that the military work. I tried to talk to General Lima but the Brazilian military said they were unable to contact him. And just when everyone thought the so-called Brazilian Roswell was over, reports emerged of yet another alleged alien encounter. Several months later, an elderly lady, Mrs. Klepp, says she saw a creature while attending a party at the local zoo. According to reports, she was so shocked she was unable to move for several minutes. I went outside to have a cigarette onto the balcony and I saw something really ugly. It was dark brown and had big bulging red eyes. It was really ugly. I'm sure it wasn't an animal. It is a coincidence that around the same time as the sighting of this creature, we were having problems. And there were actually some animals that had died since February. I lost five animals, but we do not know why. There was no scientific explanation and nothing came to light in any post-mortem examination. This is very strange. I have been director at this zoo for seven years and there has never been anything like this. Just what happened in Virginia on the weekend of January the 20th, 1996, remains shrouded in mystery. On the one hand, we have locals who say they saw UFOs, crashed saucers and alien bodies captured by the military. On the other, we have total denial on the part of the military and the authorities, citing hysterical locals and a total lack of physical, written or video evidence. Some people wonder if the real truth to the so-called Brazilian Roswell still lurks somewhere inside this zoo. The creature that Mrs. Klepp says she saw has never been captured. And I want to know what happened to these creatures. I think the whole world wants to know if these creatures are still in Brazil and uh, definitely what happened to them. We believe that if this case is definitely proved to be true, then it is as important, if not more important, than the case of Roswell. If encounters with alien creatures in Brazil seem unsettling, even more bizarre reports have been emerging from the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico.
deep in the hills of Puerto Rico. The Arecibo Space Observatory has been attempting communication with deep space for the past 30 years. Rather alarmingly, it may not only have received a reply, but a personal visit. In the last two years, people say Puerto Rico has been terrorized by a creature known locally as a chupacabra, or the goat sucker, so called because it drains the blood out of its victims. We've obtained the only known footage of what is believed to be a chupacabra. Some biologists say it's just the carcass of a wild cat. The glitch one, so it was like a three feet tall, skinny legs, white wings. It wasn't like a bird. It wasn't normal. It was like, birds fly away, but this was really fast. Wow. It was something unusual, not normal. Just what the chupacabras are remains a mystery. Some people believe they are the products of covert genetic experiments which have escaped from US military bases on the island. Others are convinced that they are alien creatures from another planet. The Puerto Rican authorities say it's just wild dogs. The face was very small, with two holes where the nose is and with a mouth you could hardly see. The eyes were like two drops of water, but red. I looked and saw two creatures with neon green eyes, which turned red when they looked at me. And I suddenly felt a current and couldn't move. I don't know whether it was just fear or it was them transmitting something. It was gray, about three to four feet tall, and had red eyes and a fin on its back. It was floating outside the window, grabbing Roderick's hand. When we rushed in, it fled. Jorge Martin is well known on this small island. He's been researching the chupacabra phenomenon for over two years. They walk on two legs, erect, and they have this strange spines or quills or whatever that goes from the back of their heads down to the lower back and they start to change in colors by breathing very fast they illuminate themselves and they start doing this very faint humming sound and somehow this seems to impel these creatures which fly away i think the chupacabras are alien in origin at first i used to, to think that maybe this was some type of genetic manipulation some experiment that had been done here in Puerto Rico uh, and eventually it escaped to the environment and no one would take any responsibility for it. But then as we started getting more and more reports from serious reliable witnesses from all over Puerto Rico uh, in which these creatures were being observed together with UFO, with alien humanoid beings and being uh, levitated into this craft, etc., I had to change my mind. One witness, Mr. Jesus Sanchez, said he did manage to get close enough to one to strike it with his machete after it attacked his rabbits. He's convinced it's no ordinary animal. I heard a noise, so I came out to see what it was. When I came out, the creature ran past me, so I hit it with the machete twice. It made a hollow sounding noise, like a drum. After that, it ran off. He says that when he returned to his rabbits, they were all dead, with blood drained from their bodies. The marks were quite incredible. No one human would leave those kind of marks. Not even a doctor would leave the kind of marks that the creature left. They had holes through the neck, here to the veins, like in an operation. No one could do that around here. I asked Mr. Sanchez to identify the creature he saw that night. 
I showed him artist impressions of a chupacabra based on other eyewitness descriptions. This was the creature I saw. The shape of the eyes, the nails like that, and the claws on its feet. Some people in Puerto Rico say they're monkeys, but they're lying because monkeys can't fly. They must come from another planet. Usually what we're seeing in the necropsy findings is uh, round, perfect wounds, primarily from half a centimeter to a centimeter in diameter. They go into the base of the skull, also into the base of the jaw. We hardly ever see rigor mortis in some of them, but I would say that about three-fourths of the volume of blood from the animals is removed. The chupacabra, when it attacks, it, it, it appears, seems to produce a probe out of its mouth. Um, maybe a fairly long probe, maybe six, eight, eight inches or so. Um, and they, they insert this probe in, in small animals such as chickens, ducks, geese, uh, usually, usually in the neck area. Policeman Juan Coyazu says he came face to face with a chupacabra one night. Suddenly I heard the car alarm go off. I thought someone was trying to steal it, so I raced down the stairs. And when I got down there, there was an animal fighting my dog. When I got closer, I realized that it was a chupacabra, which had been described to me before. So I stepped back a few feet and shot at it with my gun. When I shot at it, what it did was to roll itself up like a worm and rolled along the ground until it hit the wall. Then it stood up and disappeared within seconds, unbelievably fast. Armed with the eyewitness reports, I asked the Puerto Rican authorities to comment on these strange events. One local mayor believes the chupacabras do exist and has put his career on the line to hunt for them. It's definitely an extraterrestrial. It's something that's never been seen before. I used to work for the police in Puerto Rico before becoming mayor and investigated many cases. But I've never come across something as strange and difficult as this. I went to many people. I went to the chief of police. But he wouldn't help me. He took it as a joke. He said that it was just some kind of wild animal. We've come to two conclusions. One is that it is a creature from another planet. And the other one is that it is an experiment. An experiment from the government in El Yonqui. Those are the two conclusions. It's very important to realize that um, witnesses, when they report something like this, will simply um, dredge something up from their own um, belief system, their own knowledge, and, and particularly, importantly, their own cultural background. So what we have here, I think, is clearly an incident where something was seen. But this idea that um, it's necessarily something to do with UFOs and aliens may only have arisen once Western UFO researchers became involved. We have thousands and thousands of very good testimonies uh, uh, of reliable witnesses. And we believe in these people. They have lost their livestock, they were living. Uh, they deserve an answer from our governments. You know, I never believe in UFO, I never believe in nothing like this until this happened to me. Now I believe, because I saw it with my own eyes. What do you think is going on here? We are not alone. 
We are not alone in the we are not alone in the universe. That's all. Just what is going on here in Puerto Rico remains a mystery. If reports are to be believed, then some sort of animal is viciously attacking this island's wildlife. And in Virginia, again according to local reports, a bizarre looking creature was seen by a number of witnesses before being captured by the authorities. Some people claim that these events are proof of alien contact. Proof that planet Earth is being terrorized by extraterrestrial creatures. And yet, there's no hard evidence or conclusive scientific data that can substantiate these claims. We might not be alone in the universe, but if these creatures are indeed alien visitors, we may wish we were. Imagine waking up to an unexpected guest in your bedroom. It was sort of...